You know, sometimes I really sit back and think we're all very, very lucky to be alive in an era like this where technology is actually making incredible innovations happen. Look, as an example, just our show today has two world firsts. We've got an air conditioner that can actually take care of and eliminate even COVID-19. I mean, bacteria, viruses, also the coronavirus. And we've got the world's lightest AMD business notebook. So lots and lots of interesting things. Amaze fits next. Watch the GTS 2. We'll kick off our incredible journey on the Gadget 360 show today with this. This is the world's lightest AMD powered business notebook. You know, this matters because of course we all want everything to be thin, light and portable. But business laptops have to have a lot more going for them. You can't really compromise with them. It can't be gimmicky. You know, small to medium businesses have a great amount of need for things to be just right. So this is from HP. This is their ProBook 635 Aero. Aero, of course, being that it's super light. AMD powered, which is again a big, big, big change because usually Intel, right? So lots and lots of things coming about that are big changes. So what did we think of this one? Let's take a look. The lockdown and the pandemic changed the way we look at laptops especially for work in small and medium enterprises. We all need a light, portable, top-of-the-line, full-featured laptop that can last the entire day without a charge. And we need them to look really good too. Thus, when HP said they are sending us the world's lightest AMD-based business notebook, the HP ProBook 635 Aero G7, we were very excited. So just how good is it? Let's find out. Starting with the design of this laptop, the variant with us in this shiny silver finish looks clean and minimal. A compact machine, the ProBook is one of the lightest business laptops at just about a kilogram, which makes it really easy to carry around. It may be thin and light, but HP provides a healthy set of connectivity options. There are two USB Type-A ports, a USB Type-C Thunderbolt port, a 3.5mm audio jack and an HDMI port as well. Powered by an AMD Ryzen 4700 chipset, this machine is an absolute beast. We got to experience this performance firsthand when we turned on the laptop since it boots up in a flash. With virtually no load time, things move fast. The performance was uniform throughout for both generic and specific tasks. Not surprising since the variant with us has 16 GB of RAM. This fluid performance can also be attributed to Windows 10 Pro OS loaded on it too. The AMD Ryzen chipset also has integrated Radeon Vega graphics which means yes, you can do some light gaming on this business laptop. With 512 GB of SSD storage on our variant, we didn't fear that the laptop would run out of memory if we decided to save some heavy files on it. Featuring a 13.3 inch FHD display, this laptop can handle complex worksheets, long documents, multiple net pages and also very importantly, we had a ball watching our favorite movies on it. For a laptop being pitched for businesses, this 1920x1080 Full HD display on offer is stunning and surprised us with its color accuracy. Complementing the display is a dual speaker setup which is really loud and definitely adds a punch to the experience. Talking about the optics, we get a 720p HD camera with a manual shutter on the G7. Both are very important for our current times. A business laptop essentially needs a heavy duty keyboard that can keep up with our work and the one on ProBook Aero does just that. With backlit keys and satisfactory travel time, it was a joy to type this very review on it. The trackpad situation is also favorable with a satisfactory response time. Another important metric of judging a business laptop is its battery life. Fortunately, HP has got that formula right since the ProBook lasts well over a day on a single charge, 16 to 18 hours. Plus, this is a super secure laptop with enterprise-grade security built in. And with that, it's time for the verdict. The ProBook Aero 635 G7 with its sleek design and heavy-duty specs is a shining example of the changing nature and need of business notebooks. If you are in the market looking for a business laptop, then the latest ProBook by HP just might be the product for you. It starts off at Rs. 74,999. So like we said, we are very impressed with this one, a great laptop by HP and AMD. But now let's talk to Ketan Patel, who's Managing Director for HP India Market. Ketan, great to have you on the show. So very quickly tell me, you know, small and medium businesses may well be the most affected, most hit by the pandemic, by the lockdown. How is the market and how is technology helping there? Uh, Absolutely. The, the pandemic has really transformed the way how SMEs have got challenged, right, uh, in terms of uh, how to really be resilient in this environment. 
and also uh, have given them a lot of opportunity to think differently than what they have been doing in the past. And one of our learnings as per our study, what we did is most of them wants to be now ensure, most of them want to ensure that they are digitally ready. They have a right level of digital ecosystem because in a world of potential hybrid work, that's what the future of work is going to look like, irrespective of how pandemic will go away completely in a few years time, the hybrid workplace is going to be reality. And that's what they are really looking at is from an opportunity standpoint in terms of how do they digitally transform themselves in order to be relevant to take care of any kind of future uh, uh, issues which may come. So what is HP's role in trying to revive and making SMBs come back to profitability, getting their business going again? We, Rajiv, as you know, we, we, we are a company which really develops right products and solutions with a lot of innovation. But to me, innovation has to now get into a very different space, which is about uh, insights-based innovation and outcome-based solutions. Rather than just selling product to retrofit everybody, uh, we need to really be uh, smart enough to understand the needs and, and the needs are changing rapidly. The kind of transformation which we all saw in last one year in our space uh, could not have happened in five years' time. So that's ma- moving at a very rapid pace. So it's important to understand what are the challenges and what are the opportunities as we just discussed for SMEs and then create the right level of ecosystem solutioning which is customized to their needs rather than saying, hey, I have this laptop or I have this printer, just go and buy, right? Apart from products and and, and really doing innovation around products, one of the other things which we really feel important for SMEs is to really, how do we really move them from huge capital expenditure to creating products and solutions for more pay as you use so that they can size up, size down, depending on how they grow their business and expand their footprint. So Ketan, I have to find out very, very innovative product like the one we've reviewed right now. So can you tell me a little bit about this entire idea of innovation in the SMB market? Product innovation has been the core to what we do. As I said, uh, we really continuously look at insights and then create the right level of innovation, which can really add value. And uh, the ProBook 635 Aero is one of such product, right? The reason why we made it this one of the lightest business notebook and AMD based business notebook is because mobility is becoming so critical today that without laptop you can't survive today and with this hybrid workplaces which I spoke about people will be on the move all the time so how do we ensure that you have the light weight but no compromise on performance and that's where this performance has been taken care of uh, in this product which is top class performance with ultra mobility the second thing which I would say security is becoming a big concern as you really work from anywhere and endpoints are more vulnerable than where they were ever before because most of the network infrastructure on security has been done very well by the companies in order to protect themselves. But endpoint intrusion is where there are a lot of challenges and we have done a lot of work around that uh, on our products uh, to ensure that the right level of security layering has been done. And, and, then the, um, and, and then the last thing is about how do you build products which are sustainable because pandemic has also taught us one very important thing is that we have to make this world sustainable with the right level of solutions the interventions what we have done in product engineering itself within the product as well as packaging to use the right level of sustainable material i think that's where we are also thinking that those the customers are really seeing this as a huge value thank you so much ketan for being with us on the show love to have you back thank you so much and now let's move on to another world first and this one i think is absolutely remarkable i mean think about it an air conditioner that you install, ACs are becoming dramatically different in what they do, right? At one time, it used to be this big bulky box and that's pretty much what it used to be. Now, ACs are so different. I mean, you can change tonnage. You can actually have them smart. They actually know how many people are there in a room. But did you ever think an AC would also be able to do something like eliminate COVID-19, the coronavirus, get rid of bacteria and viruses in your room? Well, I never thought of it until someone came up with it. Panasonic HU series ACs can actually do that. But you know, that's just the start. They can do so much more. Temperature rising, days getting longer, that prickly feeling as you go out. It's safe to say that summers are officially here. This change in weather also means a change in our technology, more specifically our air conditioners. But even this category has dramatically changed. Case in point, the HU series inverter AC by Panasonic. While this has everything you need in terms of technology within, it has one more feature that is absolutely the need of the hour. This new gen AC promises to safeguard users 
against the coronavirus. Yes, you heard that right. So how does it do that? In terms of design for the HU series, Panasonic has done a great job. The indoor unit is sleek, minimalistic and clean looking. The design is also quite practical since it is really easy to open up the front lid and take out the filters in case a user wants to clean them. A basic feature but crucial when you're dealing with split ACs. This design language is followed up on the outdoor unit as well which looks strikingly premium in its silver grey finish. There is an LED display towards the right side of the AC which depicts basic information like the temperature and cooling mode. Time to turn it on and beat the heat. We decided to start out slow and set the temperature of the AC to 22 degrees. Within minutes we could feel the temperature around us drop. Great air throw and optimal cooling. The compressor on board is tuned optimally. Also, while we switched between different fan speeds, we noticed how silent the AC is even at the highest speed setting. We have the bigger 1.5 ton variant which is a better choice for bigger areas like drawing rooms since the smaller 1 ton might not be sufficient to cover greater real estate. But it is not the cooling that sets the A2 series apart from a regular air conditioner. As it turns out, Panasonic has introduced their latest Nano E technology with the A2 series. An incredible innovation, the Nano EX technology has been tested and proven to inhibit 99% of bacteria and viruses including COVID-19. Once turned on, the HU series air conditioner generates 4.8 trillion OH radicals per second which attach themselves to the airborne bacteria and inhibit them. This anti-COVID technology works in a three-step process. First, the OH radicals attach themselves to the virus, then they transfer the virus protein and inhibit the virus in the final step. Fortunately, you don't necessarily have to turn on the compressor to use the Nano EX function since it works with a regular fan mode as well. Also, this is not the only Nano E function on board. The HU series can also act as a purifier with the press of a button thanks to the Nano EG technology. This active air purification technology inhibits pollutants by deactivating 99% of airborne particles and PM2.5. The AC generates 3 trillion negative ions per second that eliminate the airborne pollutants, thus improving the air quality around us. Just like the Nano EX function, Nano EG can also be used with regular fan mode, which means in winters when pollution is raining supreme, the HU series AC will act as a potential deterrent against it. The Nano EG function can be turned on or off. The unit comes with a backlit display remote, very easy to use, and we were able to understand the functions quickly. But it's not just the remote with which one can command this AC since this air conditioner has got smart features as well. With inbuilt Wi-Fi, a user can connect using Panasonic's Mirai app. The Mirai app is a well thought out and high tech app that works to give you control from changing the cooling modes to turning on the Nano EG feature. A user can also make a customized hourly temperature schedule using the app, a feature we'd like to see in more air conditioners down the line. The smart arc of the HU series is completed with the fact that we can also talk to this air conditioner since it is compatible with both Amazon Alexa and Google Home. So should you be switching to the Panasonic HU series inverter AC this summer? We would say absolutely yes. It does everything a normal AC does and more, plus it brings in super smart features plus air purification and the super innovation of it being able to neutralize bacteria and viruses including COVID-19. Let's take a quick break right now on the Gadget 360 show. When we come back, lots more happening. Another week, another smartwatch. And I would actually want to say another week, another Amazfit smartwatch. I mean, these guys take out a smartwatch, what? two a month, something like that, right? Now, this is their GTS 2. The GTS was one of their more famous ones. Uh, pretty much everything you want in a smartwatch is out there. It's nice looking, slight bit of a tweak in the design to make it look a little bit more streamlined, more interesting than normal, typical generic smartwatches. Very, very light, yet has a good battery life. Almost every feature that you want, whether you want it for health or fitness, every feature is in there. So what did we think of this, the GTS 2? With the smartwatch market picking up pace these days, there is a frenzy of new devices in the market today. In the middle of this, 
Huami decided to introduce refreshed versions of its existing lineup of GTR and GTS smartwatches. While we've already reviewed the GTR 2, this week on the show we're all set to check out the latest GTS. So what are the upgrades in this smartwatch beyond the obvious facelift? Let's find out in our review. Amazfit has carried forward the design language from the original GTS on this smartwatch. We get to see a familiar square-shaped dial on the watch supporting a 3D curved display. Admittedly, the bezels have been shrunk down and the watch definitely looks premium. At just about 40 grams, the watch feels super light on the wrist and the nylon straps sit comfortably without causing any trouble. Shifting our focus to the smartwatch now, on the front we get a 1.39 inch AMO LED display encased in an aluminium alloy. Bright and responsive, the display on the GTS 2 lived up to our expectations. Whether it was a gentle tap or a solid swipe, the response time was accurate. The display is easy to read under direct sunlight as well, although it does take some adjustments. Now the GTS 2 does come with an always-on display, but a user can also use the button mounted on the right side of the smartwatch to wake it up. Once you're in, you're greeted with the same proprietary OS by Huami that we saw on the GTR 2. Providing a fluid experience, the software integration on the GTS 2 is even better than we'd experienced on the new generation GTR smartwatch. The performance was snappy and the animations looked even better on the square-shaped dial. There are also some personalization options available on board like multiple watch faces to choose from and setting up reminders. Where GTS 2 absolutely shines is the buffet of sensors that Huami has loaded on it. There is a highly accurate heart rate monitor that comes in handy when you exercise. There is also an SpO2 monitor which shows quick but not necessarily accurate results. We also get 3 GB of internal storage which can be used to store applications and even music on the watch. Yes, just like its circular sibling, there is an inbuilt microphone and speaker on the GTS 2. This setup can also be used to answer phone calls and literally comes in handy. In classic Huami fashion, the application to connect the GTR 2 with our smartphone is the ZepFit app. With its neat and tidy UI, the application shows comprehensive data about our fitness regimen along with maintaining logs for our sleep cycle and stress. The app, although in limited capacity, gives access to some more customization options like downloading more watch faces and changing notification settings. A major criteria for judging a smartwatch is its battery life and this is where we have mixed feedback for the GTS 2. During our testing, the smartwatch gave us a mileage of 3 days with all the sensors turned on before we had to plug it in. And with that, it's time for our verdict. Even though the GTS 2 lags behind in the battery department, it makes up for it with its well-defined software and hardware integration. At 12,999 rupees, you can consider this smartwatch if you want a premium user experience at an affordable price. That then is the Gadget 360 show. I mean, in one show, I did two world firsts. Can you imagine what's going to happen next week? Mm -hmm.